Hi, everyone. I'm Vanessa Sears. And I'm Frank Lopresti. We are so excited for all of you to see our new movie, 14 Love Letters. <laughs> we have a couple of questions that Hallmark Movies and Mysteries sent our way that we'll be answering. So let's get started. Uh, first question is, in 14 Love Letters, my character Callie moves back home to carry on her family's business and has a new neighbor, Jackson, who she doesn't exactly see eye to eye with. Without giving too much away, can we share how our characters become involved in each other's lives? All right. Well, I've bought a farm. Oh, should, should, I, should I take over, Vanessa, on this? Yeah, place? go for it. <laughs> okay. Pardon me. Um, well, I basically bought this farm where, where I run produce. And um, this happens to be Callie's uh, family farm. I mean, that uh, I've taken over recently. She still owns a little portion of that farm. And I'm trying to ease my way into acquiring her land for a lifelong dream I want to fulfill. Along that way, I, uh, I realize there's two dreams I need to fulfill, and one of them's love. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll say for for Callie, for my character, um, at first I'm definitely not too warm on Jackson, um, but I really quickly realize that he's really actually here for the community and is trying to, you know, become a real part of this town. Um, I think we end up finding out we have some similar interests. We're both into reading these mystery novels that feature in the film. Um, so the more we kind of realize we have a bit in common, exactly. the more I'm able to not be quite so annoyed with Jackson buying my family farm. <laughs> you can't be annoyed with Jackson. Come you can't be annoyed with Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, full disclosure, iced coffee, okay? Tropical coconut flavor. There we go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to take the next question, Franco? Uh, yeah. So, Vanessa, Callie is focused on finding success with her skincare business, but then anonymous love letters begin to arrive. Please tell us, how do the mysterious letters impact her view on love? I don't want to spoil anything, but it's safe to say that Callie's view on love really opens and expands when she first starts getting them. She doesn't even think that they're for her. She thinks it's a mistake, which kind of gives you some insight into the state of her love life. She really is not experiencing a lot of romance in her day to day because she's working really hard and she's focused on her business. Um, but it really adds a bit of mystery, excitement, and like I said, romance into her life and gets her thinking about the kind of future she wants to envision. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Number three, Jackson and Callie both bond over wanting to turn their hobbies into a career. Without giving away any spoilers, do we each have a favorite moment in the movie that we can share? Go for it, Callie. Oh, I think my favorite moment is there's a beautiful dance scene where the whole town is in this gorgeous barn yeah. and it's lit up so beautifully. And, um, you know, we have these this band playing live music and Jackson and Callie have a really good time just dancing and having a good time together and kind of letting go of some of the stress that's in their lives. Mm -hmm. I love that whole sequence. Yeah, for me, I, I'd say, I mean, like, first and foremost, just, like, interacting with all the animals. Yes. You know, like, all the scenes with the animals. I think, like, the first scene where I'm, where I'm holding the goat, like, that was, like, a first for me. <laughs> City boy, so living on this, like, like filming on a farm and being part of the, you know, with all these animals, I have, a like, a, a great admiration for horses. So just being around all the animals was, was special and specific, that picnic scene we did. Yeah. I mean, it was such a romantic gesture, the way it was set up was like, hey, I mean, like, this is a little bit of Franco over here. They must know me too well, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so just filming that scene um, where we had the picnic and the horses were to our left and there yeah. was the breeze and this open field. I mean, that was a really fun scene to play for me. It really yeah. felt like we were on vacation. Like, it didn't feel like we were at work. We were just, you totally. know, sitting back having cheese and, totally. and prosciutto and the horses yeah, were yeah. a lovely time. <laughs> And every time the horses would make a noise, it was yeah. really pretty funny. Yeah, it was great. It was great. Oh, it was lovely. Okay. Callie and Jackson have different perceptions on how to manage a farm. So how does working together help them open their minds to new possibilities? Mm. Take it away, Vanessa. Yeah, I think that... Uh... Throughout the movie, we see that Callie is really, really independent and she has a hard time accepting help. And uh, I think it's so great for her to see that, you know, Jackson kind of has a different 
way of moving through the world and that he's really, really happy to offer help and to support her. Um, I think that really changes the way she thinks she wants to operate when she starts kind of being able to accept help from Jackson and then after that from lots of other people in her life. Totally, totally. I, I, I am like on the same path uh, with you for that answer. Cause I think that like when you make an honest effort to collaborate, you push ego to the side and you really try to connect and invite the uncomfortable feeling. Then the other side can, can be much brighter than you anticipate. And in this film for Jackson, uh, letting Callie in turned out to be exactly what I needed. Right. Yeah. Uh, so love was the answer in that, in that case. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> as our characters' relationship progresses, they discover they have a lot in common as Jackson supports Callie with her skincare products. How do the mysterious love letters that Callie receives from potential suitors affect their relationship? Jackson can definitely get a little bit jealous. Just what he's <laughs> gonna say, he can get a little bit jealous, you know? <laughs> You know, he's opening himself up to Callie, you know, he's being vulnerable, he's really making an effort to build the beginnings of a potential relationship. So, I mean, the other suitors can, you know, put those walls up for Jackson, but, um, I mean, like, also, too, I mean, he doesn't want to get hurt again. He's got a lot of pain in his life, so heartbroken Jackson does not want to exist. So, uh, <laughs> he's drawn with the decision of whether he's going to, you know, let her go, give up on this, or push forward and follow his heart and be bold and really know that he's he's interested in her and that he wants to you know get the girl so, so yeah <laughs> but those potential suitors i don't know those other boys <laughs> <laughs> i don't think jackson likes them too much <laughs> yeah. Yeah. how about yourself um i think it's sort of delightful in the script actually that the suitor is the other gentleman that callie is finding out if she's interested in sort of um of course they just they help Callie open up to the idea of love and I think it's really fun to see a Hallmark movie where we actually get to explore some different options and really date and see you know is is this person right for me really figure out for myself what do I want what am I looking for so of course it's just really fun in that it opens Callie up to the idea of love and in a funny way without those suitors she wouldn't have opened up to Jackson so it's kind of an interesting interesting dynamic that these suitors present a problem and are also sort of the cause of Callie's heart opening up enough to see Jackson as a potential and start to question what that would look like. It's hmm, a really good answer. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> but I think we have another question. Okay. Callie spends time reading mysteries and finds herself in her own when these mysterious love letters begin to arrive. Do we each have a favorite book or author we enjoy reading? I mean, I love reading a lot of different books. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, most recently, I was reading some Baldwin, and it was one that I hadn't read before in other countries, so that was really, really great. Um, it's kind of funny. I actually hadn't read a lot of mystery novels before this movie, mm -hmm. and not intentionally but i've ended up reading quite a few just by happenstance and so i'm kind of falling in love with that genre actually <laughs> do you read a lot franco um yeah you know when i when i really get a chance i'm i'm i'm, I'm a pretty slow reader it take, sometimes it takes a long time for me to complete a book that's me being completely honest um but the one that really sticks with me the most is the alchemist by paulo coelho I just find that book to be super inspiring, uh, very much a part of, of who I am and, and I mean, how I've gone throughout my life. I mean, with my belief in achieving anything I can set my mind to, facing fear dead on and just personally growing through the struggles that can occur in life, taking on those lessons, that book just really speaks to me, The Alchemist. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I also uh, live by this book, I was introduced to it by my mentor uh, for The Four Agreements. Um, yeah. Be impeccable with your word. Don't take anything personally. Don't make any assumptions and always do your best. I mean, if I can go back to the four agreements, um, I mean, I'm in a good place. Uh, it's definitely a daily battle for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, currently, I've been on about a three month run with this book. I'm getting through it though. It's it's called Grit by, um, by Angela Duckworth. Yeah, just about, uh, I mean, studies about passion and perseverance, how grit can get you through 
you know, the threshold of success. And, and uh, I'm just, I, I'm really, I love, I love those books a lot. You know, when I talk, when, if, if I'm, if I'm really, really looking for something nice to read too, apart from reading the book, because sometimes they're so long and I know I won't get through it, I'll read a play. I'll pick up a little play, you know, and just, you know, dig into some plays. So, yeah. Love it. Also, there's nothing wrong with taking your time through a book, like savoring yeah. words, actually letting them sit with you, rest and reflect on them. I think sometimes we put too much emphasis on speed reading. And there's like, That's I love true. that you're taking three months with a book. That's like actually going to stay with you and impact your day to day. And totally. As long as I like underline things that like resonate with me, underline and highlight. And if mm -hmm. I forget, I just go back, I'll sift through and I'll be like, okay, now, now I know where I am, you know? Uh, um, See, I can yeah. scribble in plays. I can't write in a book. That <laughs> <laughs> I can't dog near the pages. I have to have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah my grand my grandmother's actually a a, a a novelist and a poet. No uh, way. All in, Ital in Italian literature, um, but uh, sometimes you know, every time I go to her house, I'll, I'll read I'll read poetry with her. She's got some really amazing stuff. But that's uh, amazing. You're a real life Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Very good casting. <laughs> so so let's, let's let's uh talk about these dreams because both yeah. of our characters have big dreams for themselves. Um have you ever had a big goal that you set out to hit and what was your process in hitting it? Um actually funnily enough, I feel like this is so cheesy, but 14 love letters was sort of a goal coming to mm -hmm. life. Um, I My background is in live performance in theater. And uh, until recently, that was, you know, my main kit and caboodle. And then uh, as that kind of hit a, stand, a standstill due to global events, uh, the thing that was still going was film and TV. And I knew that I'd been really excited about it for a long time. I dabbled in it here and there, but uh, I hadn't really had the courage to fully pursue it and commit to it. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't know if I was good enough. I didn't, I was scared. It was different. It was a change. Um, and all these fantastic opportunities came around to audition. And uh, I did a movie, um, a Christmas movie, and was playing, you know, kind of a supporting lead. And that experience was so wonderful and everyone was so warm and kind and, you know, it's falling in love at Christmas time. It was so magical. And I just really felt like, I think I can do this. I really like this. I get the same thrill as I do from doing live performance. And that really boosted me to say, okay, I think I wanna play a lead in one of these. I'd really like the challenge. I'd really like to get to explore the full arc and, you know, have that responsibility and also that joy and that excitement. And so I just, I, I, you know, was doing coachings. I was auditioning a lot and um, I started getting really specific about the craft of film and TV and I'm still learning. That's an ongoing process, but booking 14 love letters was like, so, so exciting. It really felt like a dream come true. And then of course, Franco, you know, like the set was so fabulous we had an incredible team it was so supportive it just felt like so many good things clicking into place with good people and it was such a pleasure to work on an mow that was also so diverse it it really felt like a big check mark for me it was yeah it was a bit of a dream come true <laughs> yeah. how about you yeah, you were you were fantastic by the way Thanks. Uh, nat natural so that transition was flawless <laughs> um yeah, for me, I mean, I uh, my my dream since I was a kid was to be a professional soccer player. That's that's the honest to God truth. Um, before becoming an actor, I was on that path of life. Um, you know, I I my dream was to play soccer in Italy and to secure a professional contract. And and you know, throughout my soccer career, there was a lot of ups and downs. I I got a you know I got a scholarship and went to school in, in, at the University of Rhode Island, and. Um, my first two years weren't the greatest. I mean, you know, didn't see eye to eye with the coach and couldn't get on the field. Um, but through all, through facing adversity in those moments, my, I had a goal. I had a goal. I never gave up. I believed in myself. My junior year, I got to play finally. And then on my senior year, my, my teammates vote me captain, which was like a big, you know, thing for me because I was so, so all over the place of like, what's happening? Why am I not playing? I just got to keep working hard, believing in myself. And that was a big reward for me. After soccer, after my, you know, my college years, I, I went down and, you know, an interesting route to find my way to Italy. Um, you know, I was blessed with the opportunity to do some modeling 
And, um, you know, modeling took me to Italy. And I remember I, I had a soccer agent at the time and there was a big kind of uh, disagreement in, in, our, in our contract and I wasn't able to play uh, for about a year with the team. Wow. And at that time I got an opportunity. My, my modeling agent goes, hey, an, an agency in Milan wants you to go the, to Italy to model. And I'm thinking, trying to put the pieces together. I'm talking to my father and saying, dad, let me go to Italy. I don't know anything about this modeling thing, but it's bringing me there. Let me go there. And while I am there, I can knock on doors for teams and try to find a way to play. And I was able to do that. And I played in fourth division uh, for a little bit and then had the opportunity to go on trial with Toronto FC in the MLS in 2016. Didn't work out, but um, uh, I really hit my goal. And that was uh, incredible. And then when I became an actor in 20, 2017, I mean, get into the craft uh, at 26, 27 years of age. I mean, I had goals and I'm hitting those goals, you know. I mean, can I what, can I say that at 31 years old did I ever see myself in this in this position? Uh, no, but I believed in it. I believed in it, and uh, and I'm here. So my process is complete irrational belief in oneself. Hmm. I think I can do anything. You know, and I think that's what an artist is to begin with. You know, I mean, a complete yeah. irrational belief in yourself. And when you have this belief in, in yourself that is like, what you can't do it. Nah, come on. No, you can. You really can. And I encourage that for anybody, you know, and anybody, you know. So, yeah. I love that. And there's something to be said for, you know, someone saying, no, you can't and letting that light a fire inside of you to say, I'm going to prove you wrong, actually. Oh. <laughs> I and am going to hit those goals. I am going to cross those dreams off the dream list. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And we're, we're, we're in an industry of like, we get told no a lot of times, you know, mm -hmm. so it's that, you know, we're, uh, we gotta have thick skin and constantly, you know, believe in ourselves and, and not um, self sabotage our auditions or, you know, because the best form of, of uh, playing and flowing is when you are completely relaxed and just trusting in, in what your ability is, right? Yeah. Uh, cool. Cool. Okay. I think we've got one more question. One more question. Um, this movie is centered around Callie receiving anonymous love letters. Have we ever written an anonymous love letter or had our own secret admirer, Franco? Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, I've never, I've never, I've never, no, I can't say that I've written an anonymous love letter. I've written an anonymous love song um which was a, a quick story long story short uh freshman in high school you know infatuated with a uh, junior and she was just she just i was in love in, in about a, three days uh so i go and i write this song right and i so happened to be in drama class and it was right beside the dance class which she was in that class and i was in my drama class and i was playing this song for my class They're like oh my god that's great like, who's it for and i'm like you know it's for her in next class and my teacher was wait a second in the dance class that girl i'm like yeah <laughs> and goes, one second leaves the classroom goes and grabs her with her friends and he goes this kid is gonna play a song for you tomorrow at 9 a.m this class so anyways word goes around the school i remember going home that night i made my mom like go buy a, a one single rose on her way home from work <laughs> you know what i mean you know so I come home, I come home, I, I go to school the next day, I bring my guitar, I'm like, like, the principal was there, people were skipping their classes, teachers, like, it, <laughs> it was oh, big class. news. It was literally up, and I'm, you know, pouring out my heart to this girl, my, my song, and literally, um, I, I hid the rose behind the piano that was in the drama class, and I grabbed the rose, and I give it to her, and she goes, thanks. <laughs> I just left. It was devastating. I was probably, I was depressed for like like a good month. But uh, other than that, I mean, like I mean, for me writing, that's a funny story. But other than that, I mean, I write. I, I remember when I first started dating Emily, I was writing her poetry and, and I'd send her stuff. And I I really like to leave her. It's not anonymous, but I like to pretend it's anonymous. And I leave her little notes in the house when she comes home and on her pillow. And I'll even like when I make her like food, I'll do like like food art and I'll like carve a heart and a strawberry and put it on the, like her egg plate for breakfast. I do all those little things. So oh I'm, my I'm definitely a big incurable romantic for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad so. that um, her lukewarm response didn't totally, you know, <laughs> make you not want to try again. Because... Uh, no, 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 no. It only, it, it, actually I gained a lot of respect from it. And a lot of people were like, 
like, wow, you did that. And I was like, I had no choice. <laughs> <laughs> I had no choice. <laughs> I love this matchmaker teacher. You're going to play her a song at 9 a.m. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> How about you? Oh, um, I, I don't have like a very clear memory of like a specific love note but I you know I was a little boy crazy in middle school I'm sure I left an anonymous note in a locker <laughs> saying Vanessa likes you Vanessa definitely didn't write this but Vanessa likes you do you like her check yes check no you know like those horrible <laughs> cheesy cheesy little little curiosities and love notes um I did have a secret admirer in high school and I never found out who it was they didn't come wow. forward mystery wow. <laughs> if it was you let me know <laughs> if you're out there <laughs> cool that's cool having a secret mind really good. Okay. it's very exciting i will say it's like very <laughs> flattering we love it awesome. okay um i think we're kind of ready to wrap up our live chat but before we do we have a rapid fire game of this or that inspired by 14 love letters so we can each pick the option we like best so I'll toss the question to you, Franco, and then answer after, I guess. Yeah, and then I guess I'll, uh, yeah, you toss me the question, then I'll toss it back. Cool. cool. Awesome. Okay, this right. or that. <laughs> Write a love letter or receive a love letter. Write a love letter. Mm. Receive Vanessa. a love letter. Okay. Receive a love letter. <laughs> okay, go dancing or hang out at a cafe. Go dancing. I got to say go dancing, too. Oh. <laughs> Start your own business or run a farm. Start my own business. I say run a farm. I, those horses have my heart. <laughs> I don't know. I, got, I was contemplative. I had to like, I even asked Emily. I was like, hmm. Huh? She's like, run a farm. I was like, nah, me. I'm a city boy. Run a business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love the city. Yeah. Okay. Have a secret admirer or play matchmaker. Play matchmaker. Mm, I yeah. think play matchmaker. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Yeah. Last one, horseback riding or ride a tractor? Horseback riding. Like, of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was so much fun. Thank you for joining us. We can't wait for you to watch our new movie, 14 Love Letters. Tune in on Sunday, July 31st at 9, 8 central, only on the Hallmark Movie and Mysteries. Tweet along while you watch using hashtag 14 Love Letters. <laughs>